Hey there, everybody. Excited to share with you today a new feature that is now live in Adobe After Effects 2024. And I am definitely talking about the ability to now bring in your 3D models from your substance packages and animate them right here in Adobe After Effects. So here's a great shot of this model that we're gonna kind of work on today. And you can see I can fully move around live in this interface and I am definitely in Adobe After Effects 2024. So how did we do that? Let's talk about that a little. This is brand new. This was in beta for quite some time, but we're gonna go ahead and open up uh, Substance Stager. So the cool thing about this kind of um, new kind of development with 3D is we now can incorporate all of our Substance apps into the Adobe After Effects interface. So here I have kind of just a small setup from previous tutorial in which I'm going to grab a, I'm going to grab my 3D files and go to file and we're going to do export scene and we're going to make sure the big change here is that we select GLB. This GLB file is going to be a globally used file for 3D that will work across all the Adobe apps. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And we're gonna save this and I already have something in there saved, but I'll go ahead and just override that with a quick okay. In a matter of seconds, we have saved it. Now, you're may asking yourself, what about Substance Painter? Well, if you have a model in Substance Painter and I went ahead and brought an untextured version of this in, I can go ahead and send that to After Effects as well. So I could go to File, Send To, Send to Adobe After Effects. And here I have two options. I would typically go to Configure, and just make sure it's set to GLB, which as you can see, it is by default. I'd also recommend changing your file path because it usually puts it in your documents. And then when you're ready to go, you could do send to Adobe After Effects and it will load it for you and work really, really nicely. So kind of moving forward here, now that we've exported this, let's open up Adobe After Effects and start a new scene. So now that I have my new project window, I need to pull in a few different things. The first thing is I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna pull in my product model. That's gonna come in as a GLB as we mentioned. The next thing, if you're a, a um, avid 3D user, you know about HDRI images. And so we're gonna pull in two HDRI images that we're gonna actually light our model with using these high dynamic range images. So I have a studio set up as well as a little setup when it comes to um, like a little outdoor soccer field here in Orlando. All right, now that I have that, I'm gonna just drag my file into my composition and you can see immediately we have access to this scene. So if you don't see this, you may wanna change the settings. For me, I usually like to say make comp size and then I go to advanced and I end up, and you can do this in basic too, but I scale this up just a little bit so I can see it okay. So now that I have that, I'm gonna scroll out a little bit and this is really where it becomes cool. I can hold down my Alt key and just start rotating and I'm pushing in my middle mouse button, by the way, for those of you new. If I use my right mouse button, I can hold Alt and zoom in and out. But these hotkeys are now available for us to kind of set up our product placement. So I'm gonna kind of frame my model using my left middle scroll wheel and right mouse buttons while holding Alt to just kind of center that. And look at that, I'm good to go. Now, let's go ahead and do one of my favorite things to do with 3D models now is go to Layer, New, and we're gonna add a light just like we normally would when we deal with 3D layers. But in this case, we're gonna add an environment light. So now that we have an environment light selected, we have a couple more steps to do. We put that into the scene. You won't see anything happen. And then we're gonna add our studio backdrop to the layer tab so you can see it shows up. And the last step is make sure that you go to your light options. You can also hit AA on your keyboard and go to source and set that to studio small. That will turn off the background if you wish and give it a few seconds. It will actually light your scene. So this is pretty cool. And it's remembering all of my specularity and all those other settings uh, within that. So, uh, you know, at this stage, you can actually go into your studio light. And if you want to open it fully, you can go to transform and there's a little rotate key in there. So if you want to make sure that your highlights are looking pretty slick, you can do that. And let's say you don't like this one. Okay, no big deal. We can grab another HDRI and Adobe has these for free 
Um, you can really find them free anywhere on the internet. So here we're gonna change it over to a soccer stadium. We just switch out the layer into where it's influenced, give it a few seconds to render, and there you go. Same thing here, we may want to add a, just a few little tweaks. I can continue to add lights to the scene. Now I will say this, 3D is expensive. And what I mean by expensive is I mean, for those of you who have uh, worked in 3D before, you know that render times will, you know, it will take some time depending on the speed of your computer. So just be aware of that when you're working in After Effects. It's relatively quick from what I've noticed. But again, anytime you're working with 3D, there is some lag here and there. Other cool things you can do. You can turn on Draft 3D and turn on the 3D ground plane. This will actually allow you to see your ground plane to help you do perspective. So again, if you have a graphics card that supports this, I have an NVIDIA card, and this definitely um, will support, the RTX card will support the Draft 3D. The other option is if you're looking for quality settings, you can go to the drop down for settings and go to render options. In render options, you can tweak these. They're usually relatively low at first, so I tweak mine up just a little bit. And this is, if you're an old school 3D user, this is kind of like us adjusting the final gather and the pixels. One piece of advice I would give you is always hit the fit to scene if your shadows don't look good and anything within the bounding box that you see will contain shadows. So if you want more shadows or less shadows, you can kind of make that box bigger or smaller using the box size. And that's just containing everything in an effort to speed up your render. Now that we have this, um, we could do a couple of other things. We can add a new solid. So let's go ahead and put a solid in the background. We'll just keep it comp size and make it deep blue. We'll drag that beneath our product right there. There we are. And again, because we were, are working in 3D, I can make that a 3D layer as well, and I can kind of start pushing it and manipulating it, and it will also be influenced by those lights, which is kind of cool. Um, we could still add effects, so you know, I love to add things like, my favorite is these days, like the CC vignette. I can drop that on, just to give it a little bit more of a designer control to it. Um, and you know, once I start kind of playing with these settings and you can see, we can kind of start adjusting just the diff different vignette colors, which is kind of nice. Play with the amount. We're just getting a little bit of lightness in the background, which is really cool. Um, all of these things are kind of ready to go and in a relatively quick time, right? Um, there are ways to kind of adjust your 3d model. Uh, uh, with adjustment layers. And again, we won't go over them in this tutorial, but I will say check out other ones out there. There are the calculations tool, so you can actually create um, a calculations adjustment and that will allow you just to affect the 3D model and not necessarily um, specific things like the background and whatnot. And where would you would use this essentially is if I were gonna go do a setup of that and we can just make this kind of a really weird looking um, solid, we would just put that on top, add a calculations to that layer, and then we could kind of play with a little bit of these settings. So my source would now be my product, um, and then I could kind of play with the opacity, and you can see now um, I do have a little bit of options when it comes to kind of this setup. So I would do a blending mode copy, and doesn't look like much, but when you start, you know, wanting to do different, I don't know if we're going to get much hue and saturation here, but we can start doing like, for instance, a colorize just of that model. That would be how you isolate it. So I said I wasn't going to go over it, but I guess I just did. Um, it's a really quick way to kind of get a, a really nice finish or tone to your final scene. And then the very last thing you can do is don't forget to add that camera. We'll have to reframe it, which isn't a big deal, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a camera into my scene and I'm gonna just use whatever default I had. Hit C for camera. I can keep tapping C for those of you new in After Effects. And we could go ahead and start adding animation to this beast, uh, which is pretty cool. And so in the scene that you saw me work in before, essentially I just uh, kind of narrowed that down to a short time frame, and I went ahead and I trimmed my comp, I add a position in the front, go up a few seconds, go through my camera, and I just did kind of a pull in on our product. 
I then grab the keyframes and as always, you can hit F9 or you can hit easy ease. I went ahead and added that. Now, when I render preview this, you're gonna notice right now I'm in full mode here. It's taking a second to play back. So give it a few seconds because it is 3D. It's going to need to kind of catch up with your RAM to kind of make this occur. If you don't have that time, you can go ahead and lower your resolution for your viewport to a third. And as you can see, it goes a little bit faster for that preview. So again, you don't get the fancy resolution, but if you're looking for animation, this is definitely a way to kind of get that look in there. After that, you can get just render it out and then put it together using maybe Premiere Pro or your favorite video editor. But there you are, all there all there you go, you all. That is what we have. And now you can import GLB files into Adobe After Effects with the click of a button, with the ease and, and fast paced use of now Universal 3D. Hope you enjoyed this demo and I will catch you in the next one.